You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Thursday, January 23rd. It is. It is. And it's a lovely day here in St. Louis. Something exciting is happening tomorrow, though. Yes. Two big things happening. Uh, oh, yes. The March for Life happening mm-hmm. in Washington, D.C. So we'll get some updates from uh, Kip. We'll be getting updates in uh, KFUO News to share with you tomorrow. And uh, we're going to take a little preview of that uh, and see... You know, sometimes when we think of the the pro life generation, who is that? Uh, what generation is that? Um, and it's getting younger and younger every year. And excited mm-hmm. to share a great story with you today of a, a marvelous young lady who has uh, really taken um, advantage of the opportunity to uh, to share her voice for those who may not necessarily have a voice for life issues. Mm-hmm. So excited to share that story with you today. Also, uh, I think you were hinting at tomorrow uh, an event here in St. Louis, the Faith and Film Festival. We're going to do a live broadcast from that at Concordia Seminary tomorrow That's as well. That's going to be fun. Yes, yes. So put on your snow boots to get there. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, I, I got a little sneak preview yesterday, went over to test equipment and make sure everything's ready to go and uh, got a little preview. They've got some interesting films lined up, so mm. it's going to be a fun event. Uh, thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting the Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at CUW. Dot edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us by phone this morning, Anna Young. She's uh, the, well, I would say the, the charter member, the, the founding <laughs> member of Students for Life of America in Davidson County. That's in Tennessee. Anna, thanks so much for being our guest today on the Coffee Hour. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Anna, share with us a little bit about your high school and your community. How would you describe your community where you live? Um, I live in Franklin, Tennessee, which is about 20 minutes from Nashville. Um, I like to think of it as like a small town. We have a historic downtown with lots of history, but also lots of southern charm. So it's not really a small town. It's a pretty well-populated and developed place. I go to Franklin High School. It's a public school with about 1,800 students. And I am so grateful to go to such a highly rated school and receive such a great education in a safe area. How did you first learn about Students for Life of America? Well, I wanted to get involved in the pro-life community, so I was doing some research to see if there were any pro-life organizations in the area for community service opportunities, and I really was just Googling purely out of curiosity. I wasn't really looking to start a club, but I stumbled across Students for Life's page, and I was hooked. I love their mission, I love their boldness, but I really love that it involved people my age. Um, This was different than like the typical right to life organization within a state because of its focus on equipping young people to become future pro-life leaders. And then you decided to start a chapter at your high school. Mm -hmm. Walk us through that, that, that process. Uh, (laughs) Oh, what, what, uh, what, um, how did you decide to start that chapter at your high school? Well, I really felt and kind of saw the need for it at my high school. I mentioned this in the report article, but abortion isn't talked about at my school in any of my classes. But I knew that I personally felt strongly about this issue, but I never really had the opportunity to share this belief at school. So I was encouraged after looking at how many groups um, nationwide Students for Life has, and I just kind of decided to go for it. Um, so I had to find a teacher sponsor and get approved by my school, but then also get approved um, within Students for Life as well. So who supported you in this endeavor as you sought to uh, sought out the, the initiation of this group? Who was supportive and, and gave you that support? Yes, I am so grateful that I had so much support. Um, my parents, 100%, they've been a constant source of encouragement. Um, my church has been awesome, Redeemer Lutheran Church in Bellevue. Um, not only have they given me expo- exponential amounts of moral support, but they've donated baby items for a baby, baby items drive we hosted. They've paid for some students to attend the March for Life, and our LWML made a donation to the organization as well. And I'm so proud that I go to a church and have a pastor, who's my dad, that um, <laughs> boldly proclaims the sanctity of life. So you received a, a lot of support. Were there challenges as you uh, started this group? A hundred percent. I didn't really know what I was getting into at the beginning in the best way possible, I guess. Um, At the beginning, I was just nervous that no one would sign up because I was like, at public school, you're encouraged to keep quiet about these things. 
So I genuinely did not know if anybody I knew was pro-life as well. I talked about it with a couple of my friends, but even them, some of them were a little bit hesitant about getting on board with something. So I was really nervous that when we had our club sign-ups that no one would come to the table. So pretty much it was me and my crazy pro-life poster against 1,800 students in my school. Um, I eventually asked a friend to stand with me um, who eventually became my vice president, but um, that concern was kind of blown away automatically because we had over 50 signups, which was amazing. Um, The other concern that we've kind of had is um, we're still dealing with is our administration at my school. Um, We were denied to do an event and don't really have any encouragement from our principals, so we're still kind of fighting that battle. How did you navigate uh, finding a a, a staff person to support you? That is, uh, I understand, one of the requirements for a a group. How did you navigate trying to find uh, someone in the administration to, to back you in this? Yeah, that was kind of a a difficult challenge, lots of prayer involved, um, because teachers, they aren't encouraged to voice their beliefs. They really do want to kind of keep their jobs at a public school. Um, I had heard that one of my past teachers was Baptist, and that's all I knew about her. I did not know if she was pro-life. I did not know anything else, but I emailed her over the summer and was like, hey, would you sponsor? And she was willing. Um, It's it's great that I have a sponsor. A lot of clubs aren't able to get that, so it was a great... Thing. Tell us a little bit about working with the national organization and uh, the the support you received there. Mm-hmm. So each chapter has a regional coordinator who helps with basically anything and everything the chapter needs, from getting started to resources to moral support. Um, my coordinator is named Elizabeth Parker, and she's awesome. Um, from there, each region has um, leadership conferences um, for the officers of Students for Life. Um, to be trained even more and hear amazing speakers such as senators, pro-life activists. And they also do, within colleges, um, Students for Life does a tabling tour where they bring a display to hundreds of colleges. So that's a cool thing to look forward to. Um, especially this Saturday, um, Students for Life is hosting the National Pro-Life Summit, which is in coalition um, with Live Action and the Heritage Foundation. So they do events as well, um, really just educating the community. It's going to be over 3,000 pro-lifers this Saturday at the conference. Wow. wow. So what are you learning through this process of starting a club and, and, and also the, the confidence that it takes to, mm-hmm. to, to stand firm and boldly in your confession and, and uh, uh, to do that in your public school setting? I'm learning a lot. I think I've, I never would have guessed a year ago that I would be here. I didn't even know what Students for Life was a year ago. And now I'm leaving for the March for Life tonight. It was kind of crazy. Um, I, I think that this has shown me that, that you can't find courage within yourself. You have to have it from God and that he will give it to you. And I, I genuinely didn't, I don't think I would have been able to do this without my faith. That has been such a key part of this, um, understanding that life is precious, but also God giving me the courage to do this and to reach out to others and also be in fellowship with other pro-lifers. I think this experience has shown me um, that you are able to do it. It doesn't matter your age. You aren't limited by the fact that you're in high school or that you're in college. Um, You're able to make an impact and change hearts. Why was it important for you to um, to have to take the stand to have this pro life voice uh, in the midst of of your public school? Well, um, our mission in Students for Life is not just to fight abortion, but to abolish it. To abolish it. So I I understand how bold it is to say that, but it really means that all hands have to be on deck. And the reality, the sad reality of the situation is that the abortion industry does prey on high schoolers. So this is something that is real in high school. I mean, I know people in my high school who have had abortions or considered having abortions. So it is something that is so real. And yes, adults kind of want to shelter us a little bit and not want us to know, you know, the evil reality of the world. But it's so important to understand that because, you know, there is such a human rights injustice going on right now. And I think that it needs to be brought into schools and it needs to be talked about because that's the only way anything is going to change is by opening the conversation. How has your group been, how has the Students for Life of America group been received by students in your high school? Um, you mentioned earlier that the, that there were students who signed up at the event. Mm-hmm. 
yes, we had over 50 sign-ups, which I was so grateful for. Um, but there has been, don't get me wrong, there's been a lot of negative pushback. Um, even at our um, sign-up table, we had people write um, terrible messages on our sign-up sheet. We had, we even had a girl come up to us and she was like, can I take a picture of you guys? I want to show my mom and so she can get this group taken off campus. And mm-hmm. I was like, sure, take a picture. And I smiled and had my thumb up and everything. Um, but, yeah, I think that there there has been negatives and positives, but I think the positives are just so overwhelming. I call our group kind of like our pro-life family. Um, we meet bi-weekly, and we're able to just be in fellowship with each other and almost provide a safe haven and kind of um, – restore our battery charge um, for the week and say, yeah, you can do this. You can open the conversation and just be a source of encouragement because the media is going to try to put you down and pro-choicers are going to try to put you down, but it's our job to lift each other up. That is a, that, that, that's a lot of work. That's bold. <laughs> uh, but wow, what a difference it's making. I want to talk yeah. more about the difference that to your that you're making, that Students for Life of America is making in your high school, and uh, your your attendance at the National March for Life mm-hmm. coming up uh, tomorrow as well. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll continue the conversation with Anna Young, Students for Life of America. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. This is Dr. Dale Meyer. Have you heard Concordia Seminary's program, Word and Work and Intersection? Every week, you can hear it on KFUO Thursdays at 2 p.m. Central Time. We visit with many interesting guests about how the Word of God applies to their daily vocations and ministries. Be sure to tune in, and may the intersection of Word and Work be busy on your corner. Our listeners and supporters are talking about Worldwide KFUO. Yeah, I think your programming is just wonderful. I love the emphasis on the traditional tunes rather than the modern music. Keep up the good work. Thank you. To leave a message on the KFUO comment line, call 314-996-1542. That's 314-996-1542. Christ for you, anytime, anywhere. Worldwide KFUO. Did you know that your individual retirement account may make the best gift to KFUO? The IRS now allows individuals 70 and a half or older to transfer their required minimum distribution directly to charity and avoid paying the associated income tax. These gifts can provide regular long-term resources to KFUO. If you have questions about making an IRA gift to KFUO, call me, Mary, at 314-996-1518. We'll send a representative out to help answer your questions and help you establish a legacy of giving to your favorite radio station, Worldwide KFUO. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We're talking with Anna Young. She started a Students for Life of America chapter at her high school, public high school, and uh, sharing that story with us today. Anna, how has your Students for Life of America chapter served your high school and your community Um, Like I mentioned earlier, Students for Life has provided what I like to call kind of a pro-life family. Um, We meet bi-weekly, we discuss pro-life apologetics, current news, and also just have time to be in fellowship with each other. Um, At meetings in the past, we've written encouraging letters to women being served by our local pregnancy resource center, the Hope Clinic, and we do fun little activities like that. Um, Serving our general high school has been harder because of administration setbacks, but even having our group on campus creates um, a lot of discussion. Um, my next project is hosting a suicide prevention training after school open to everyone. So this next semester, we are really focusing on serving our high school more as well as continuing to equip our members. Um, as for the community, we recently raised over $1,000 worth of baby items to donate to the Hope Clinic. Um, many of our members sidewalk council or simply pray outside Planned Parenthood. Honestly, any, anything we can do to support our community, we will do. What has the feedback been like from uh, from the community, from these events that you're able to do? What has that interaction been like with those people that you're able to serve? 
It is so positive. I mean, even just delivering the baby items to the Hope Clinic, it was just overwhelming joy from them. It's, it's been very encouraging interacting with other pro-life organizations um, just because they are so supportive and they're so excited for me, which I love. Um, and that's, that's different than the response I get from adults at school. So it's really nice to kind of step outside the public school world and see that, hey, people are actually supporting me, especially from my church. People come up to me every day and give me such wonderful wisdom, and I'm so grateful for that. You mentioned earlier attending the, the March for Life. Uh, it, will this be your first March for Life? It will, yes. Oh, yay. <laughs> well, congratulations. What, uh, what have you been doing to prepare for this March for Life? What have you learned about it, and what are you doing to prepare? Yes. So um, I'm actually leaving to meet at 6 p.m., and we are driving through the night 16 hours um, to get to D.C. in time for a bit of sightseeing, the rally, and then the march. But we are going on a bus with our region. So our regional coordinator has actually, um, I haven't had to really do any work for this, which has been wonderful. She's organized um, a bus tour. Um, and so it'll be um, our high school and then a couple um, neighboring colleges um, from Tennessee and Kentucky. Um, so we're going to the March for Life. Um, and I'm very excited because I've never been to the March for Life. And I'm so excited to celebrate life in our nation's capital. I feel like that's going to be such like a once in a lifetime um, type opportunity. Um, and then the next day we're attending the Pro-Life Summit, um, which I'm very excited about as well. I was able to go for the first time last year, and you you have a great experience ahead of you waiting for you. Um, I'm 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 excited for you. <laughs> what are you What are you looking forward to um, as as you enter into this new uh, event? Looking forward to this event. What What are you excited about? I am just so excited to see the people, just the mass amounts of people. I feel like that is just going to be so powerful. I think it's projected to be about 100,000 people. Um, Donald Trump confirmed yesterday he's speaking at the rally, so it's going to be a big crowd. And I think that just seeing the mass amounts of people is just going to kind of ignite the fire in my heart a little bit more and say, hey, like this is this is bigger than me, and I love being part of something that's bigger than me. Um, so, yes, I'm very excited about that that aspect. But also I've met a lot of Internet friends <laughs> through the um, pro-life community, so I'm excited to kind of meet up with them. It's kind of like a giant, like, Internet friend meetup um, because I do connect with other um, student pro-life groups across the country. Let's let's zero in on that particularly. There will be a lot of, as, as you point out, there will be a lot of people at the National March for Life, um, people mm-hmm. of, of all ages. But... Mm-hmm. The, the fact that there are going to be so many high school students mm-hmm. and college students, why is it important for your generation, which I don't even remember what generation this is. What it, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're past millennials. What, I don't remember what. Gen I think we're Gen, Gen Z. Yeah. yeah. Gen Z. So why is it important for your generation to speak so clearly and boldly for the lives of those who may not have a voice? Mm-hmm. Um, I think all hands have to be on deck, and statistics have shown that this generation really is the pro-life generation, and that the tide has shifted and is continuing to shift um, pro-life, especially with um, elections coming up. It's so important to vote pro-life. Um, it's important to know that it does not matter your age. You really can make a difference, and it's so important whether you're 90 years old or um, six years old, you know, to preach the sanctity of life and tell people about life. So I think it's it's important for our generation to get involved because we are the next round of voters. Um, It's important to be involved politically like that. But also there are so many of us that are pro-life. If we all um, spoke out, it would make such a difference. Sarah, you attended the the National March for Life last year. I did. This will be Anna's first. Mm -hmm. What tips do you have for her and others who will be (laughs) attending the March for Life for the first time this year? Um, Have your meetup spaces prepared beforehand because once you get to the mall, you do not have cell reception. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. (laughs) uh, Yeah, that was was crazy. Um, But be prepared to see lots of people have... uh, um, be aware of your surroundings and and look for people and also just um, be in the moment. Uh, enjoy enjoy being with all of those people um, and maybe bring some snacks too because it's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I was I was actually able to meet up with my own high school uh, last year right. at the march, which was a really cool experience because I didn't have the opportunity to go when I was in high school like like you're able to, Anna. Um, but that was that was a really cool thing for me to actually see people from my own high school marching there with other young mm-hmm. people um, from Michigan. That was that was really cool. Now, Anna, did you say there will be other students from your high school? I know your your region will be attending. Will there be other students from your high school attending as well? There will be one other student from my high school. Um, we do have a bunch of um, students attending. They're just going with their own church. So we probably will all meet up at some point. Um, but coming on our Students for Life trip is only one person. But a bunch of um, our group members are Catholic. And so um, the Catholic churches often have these big um, buses that take everybody down there as well. So there will be other students there, just uh, you may not necessarily see them <laughs> in the thousands of other yes, people there. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's great. So that we probably have about seven or eight students going to March for Life. Outstanding. Outstanding. So as Sarah has pointed out, uh, probably the, the I think the most helpful tip there was you may not have cell coverage while, yeah. you're, <laughs> while you're at the mall. Uh, so you want to make sure that, that you're prepared for Know that. Know where you're meeting people and bring an extra battery yeah. for your phone because <laughs> you'll be taking lots of pictures and lots of videos so you can post them all on social later. That's what happened. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> How, is, how has your family been supportive in your preparations for the March for Life and, uh, and, and your attendance at that? Um, my parents especially have been so supportive. First of all, I'm just thankful for them in general. They raised me pro-life, which I'm so grateful <laughs> for. Um, my dad has been involved in um, the life-type ministry um, with... Um, the Lutheran Church, and um, but even even my parents did have a little bit of concerns mm-hmm. at the beginning, um, not because they aren't proud of me for being pro-life, but putting myself in my parents' shoes is super important in this instance because I'm their 17-year-old daughter mm-hmm. who's completely educate, educated and, like, fired up about one of the greatest human rights and justices of all time. So I think it would be tough to see anyone recognize the magnitude of evil going on in the world at such a young age. But I think this process has made me grow up pretty fast. And I understand why my parents might have small concerns because they've seen how this has caused me to lose friends, caused me to receive new messages on social media, et cetera. But I think all of those things are kind of part of the job description. And I really think as of right now, this is where I'm supposed to be. And this is how God is using me right now. And I'm so grateful that my parents see that as well. So those concerns are cast aside pretty quickly. And they have always been there whenever I'm having a tough day and spiritual warfare is kind of kicking in. They're always there to remind me to turn back to scripture. And they're always there um, to put their hand on my shoulder and let me know that they're here for me. How do you think this whole experience of uh, starting this group, going to the March for Life, how is this going to um, impact you as you um, as you get as you get older, as you go to college, uh, move move on to, into into adulting stage of life? <laughs> how is how is this all going to to influence uh, how you move forward? Yes, this whole experience has changed kind of how I'm viewing my future at this point. <laughs> I really am considering a career in the pro life world, which I never thought about before. Um, before I wanted to be a wedding planner. Now I want to be pretty much a pro-life activist. So it's, it's changed course a little bit, uh, which I am, I'm excited for. Um, I'm planning, my brother currently goes to Concordia University of Wisconsin. So I'm hoping to go there. Um, and then after that, see where God takes me. But I really, I do think that this is something, whether it's involved um, with a pregnancy resource center or politically, I really have to be involved in the pro-life community as part of my career like that's kind of a no-brainer at this point it's something that's constantly on my mind all the time sometimes I talk about it too much probably and my parents are like okay you've talked about this for a long time (laughs) so I think this whole experience has like it's it's rocked my world in the best way possible um so I'm just I'm excited for the future I'm excited for right now but I'm really excited for the future and I'm I'm kind of curious I'm like i if this much has changed in a year, I cannot imagine where I'm going to be in four years. So that's something to look forward to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have just uh, about two minutes left. What does it mean that not only will you be there with Students for Life of America, but uh, that your church body, the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, so many Lutherans will be there. Lutherans for Life will be at the march. Look for all the, the bright green, bright yellow hats mm-hmm. as well. At this. What does it mean that, that, uh, that your church body will be there at the uh, March for Life as well? 
it means the world to me because being pro-life is so important to me, but also being Lutheran. I strongly believe I'm going to be a lifelong Lutheran, and I'm planning on staying that way. Um, And so I think that having um, the LCMS support pro-life, me, it, it means everything. I, I can't even put it into words. Um, it's like my two my two favorite things are being put together. So um, one of my close friends, um, who's also um, Lutheran, is going to be on the bus trip with me. So hopefully we'll get to spot some of the hats and maybe meet up um, with um, the LCMS during the march. So I'm very excited. Very good. Sarah, do you have any other tips or any other questions for Anna as she prepares to head out to the National March for Life? Man, just have fun. It's going to be a great experience. I'm I'm still like reveling in it a year later. I'm really sad I'm not going. <laughs> well, I hope we can catch up with you afterwards and uh, hear about your experience at the yeah. at your first March for Life as well, Anna. Congratulations on uh, and thank you for starting a Students for Life of America chapter at your high school. And thanks for sharing your story with us today. It's just uh, it, it's just outstanding to see a young person like you uh, speaking so boldly and, and taking a stand for those who don't necessarily have a voice uh, to speak about life. Thank you so much for having me and allowing me to share my story. Absolutely. is a privilege. You've been listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.